Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar, and this is Reseteer! Pinstar plays Strategy and Tactics, some hybrid of that, Episode 3. So in our last episode, we uh, went through the tutorial, we got our introduction to Dungeoneering, and uh, sold a few items, uh, got, a, got a few bucks in our uh, pockets here, and it's time to tackle the next day. Now, some of you had, uh, had commented that uh, you uh, wanted me to go a little bit heavier on the strategy side, be a little bit more traditional to my style of episodes. I hear you loud and clear, people. So from this episode forward, the focus will be a lot more heavily on the strategy and the tactics of the game more so than this story and trying to do comedy bits when the characters talk. That being said, during bits of dialogue, I will still do voices and try to make jokes. So, right then, let's get started. Now, we ended the day yesterday just a little tiny bit shy of level 3. I want to get that level 3, so what I'm going to do is restock my shelves, well, restock my shelves as best I can, anyway. Uh, the cupboard is a little bare here. But one round of selling, I should be able to uh, keep uh, occupied here. Uh, maybe if I put the focus staff... Uh, yeah. Put that there, put that there, and that there. Yeah, it's not really the kind of thing you want to be uh, uh, operating on <laughs> too much, but all we really need is a couple extra sales to get our third level, and then we can restock properly. So let's open the store. All right, what do you want? Power Phantom. All right. 116 for you, my good sir. And, yep, that gives us our level. We'll see how many others we get out of this day. Ooh, hopefully Louie buys that suit of armor. Slime fluid! Now, I don't know if this is like the, uh, um, like one of the pluses, because I have so many of them out. What we're looking for is, if you see after you make the sale, if you see a little heart appear above their mouth, um, that means you've crossed a, a, a relationship level threshold uh, with them. And therefore, they, uh, they're, well, I'll explain it once we see one of them. But it's a good thing. That's something we really want to focus on. Buy the armor, buy the armor. Armor, 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 armor! Ah, oh, you idiot. You idiot. You don't use the focus staff. There's no reasoning with you, Louie. Go, go enjoy your focus staff. All right, so here's uh, Tyr to give us another little lesson. Well, you seem more or less used to the basics of running an item shop. He, you think so? Yes, you're level three. There's one other matter, however. You cannot always be certain a customer will know what they want when they come in. What do you mean? They may come in thinking, what should I make for dinner? What would be a good weapon? Or so forth. They will not be quite sure exactly what they wish to purchase when they come through our door. In such a case, we must provide them with advice to help them decide. Wait, how could I do... Many customers will simply give up if they cannot find something suitable to their needs on our counters. Others, however, will realize that we may have reserved stock, and will inquire as to whether or not we have something they seek. That is uh, when you need to suggest an item that you think they would like. In a sense, it is the ultimate chance to show your skill as an item shopkeeper. If you know what someone desires, you will very likely impress them and cause them to return. Eek, no presser then. None at all. Well, let's give it a little practice then, shall we? No, let's not and say we did. I'll show you how it works. All right, well, first off, so what's going to happen is people are sometimes going to come in and say, I'm looking for a hat or I'm looking for some food. They're going to say a class of item, but they're not going to say what specific item. Now, if you have an item of that class, great. That's awesome. You can offer it to them. It's a little bit more nuanced than that, though. But the point of the matter is, at this point forward, we need to be have a diverse stock of items. If we do not, we will have people coming in asking for stuff that we do not have, and that will be a lost sale, no matter how good our pricing policies are. So let's go shopping. We're going to start out with the market here. All right, so uh, we don't have any necklaces. 
We also have to keep in mind our budget. So we're going to try and stretch our budget as far as person. But a necklace, I've seen people ask for that. People don't really ask for capes, so I'm going to keep off of them. Um, we have treasures. That back scratcher counts as a treasure, so we don't need to buy more treasures. We do occasionally get uh, people asking for books. So one book. Uh, we do get people very frequently asking for food. Um, I'm going to prioritize the candy. Buy lots of candy. Um, now there's another reason for buying lots of candy. Uh, I'm not, uh, I, I'll show you when we gain up a couple of, uh, levels here. And that's it for the market. Uh, for the moment, we will get more over in the Merchant's Guild. because uh, they have their thing. Yeah, now, um, yeah, Worn Sword, five left one of them rusty dagger now again we want to stretch our budget but we also want to get the good stuff when we can so it's sort of a balancing act what i like to do is go through and buy a, an el cheapo of each class just so we have it and then with any money we have left over we can get some of the good stuff because ultimately you want these sales at the higher price points because you only get a finite number of customers per day and every sale that you make the higher the base price of the item the more profit you're going to make from that sale so therefore the more higher priced items you have available for purchase the more money you're going to make a day um, per customer that you attract so, uh, but that being said, if you lose the sale, not only do you not get the sale, you also break your just combo, which is bad, really bad. So we want to focus on making sure we have a little of everything. So we're going to buy a Rusty Dagger. We sold that Focus Staff, so we'll buy another one. A uh, Wooden Bow, a Laundry Pole, a Leather Glove. Um, I'm going to buy the Windbreaker. Raincoat. A piece of Scrap Plate. Leather. Oh, wait, no, I didn't need to buy the leather armor. We had an iron armor. Uh, an iron armband, however. We can buy that. Um, common shield. Ooh, cloth hat. This cloth hat right here, that's actually really important that we get that cloth hat. It's The, the gambit's not going to pay off right away, but I'll show you how it does later. Um, wool helm, and we need charms. Souvenir charm. Okay, that's all of it. So now we can splurge on a higher cost item, or a higher margin item, rather. Cloth robes, 700. Chest piece. Common shields, that's a candidate. Warrior's helm. Warrior's helm might be a good one. Standard charm might also be a good one. Actually, let's get the standard charm. And 162. One. Ooh, perfect! Now, actually, no, that might not be a... That might not be a good idea because you still want to always keep a little bit of money in your bank uh, because if, if your first couple of customers come selling you items, you need to have enough money to pay for it. Otherwise, that's a lost uh, opportunity. So let's pick up the common shield instead. And then we have a little pocket change on, our, on ourselves just in case. Um... Yeah, since we're out, and since it only since doing whatever you want here in the town square, you can basically go to anything in the town square, any of these, and do everything here, and it's only going to burn one unit of time once you go back to the shop. So we might as well go check out the scenes that we have here. Okay, guys, yo! Hi, Nan Louie! You're actually in the chapel. I am struck dumb. Well, uh, even I gotta be a little faithful never and now and again. As I said, struck dumb. I'm surprised too! Yeah, I was praying for heaven for providing me some lunch. Sweat drop. Somehow I feel that that is not the main purpose of a chapel. Oh. Actually, it sh kinda is, dear. Oh, uh, you think so? Right then, town square. Mmm, I love being able to relax in the plaza like this. You never seem to have trouble relaxing when there we are not in the plaza. Hey, <laughs> Well, it's healthy, right? All right then, enough of that. Back to the shop. Okay, now let's diversify our shelves here. We want to make sure that everything, at least a little of everything, is on display. Um, now, up here, of course, our counter up here is extremely important. Um, we want to, I like to always put a piece of food on that front counter. It might not necessarily be the highest margin item, but it seems to draw people in. That armor there, I like that. That back scratcher there, I like that. 
Um, let's get a weapon up here while we're at it. Um... Let's go for... Let's go for the bow. Why not? And now everything else we're going to want to put on here. Laundry pole. Our leather glove. Our windbreaker. Our raincoat. Scrap plate. Iron band. Make sure you get... Make sure you're... Oh! And also make sure this cloth hat is on display. I can't really go into detail for the gam for the hat gambit yet. We need to gain another level or two uh, before I can really press the hat gambit into uh, service. But for the time being, I think we are good to open up the shop. See, we've got a couple more people strolling in because we have a nice diverse set of goods and our set of goods up at the front window is nice and diverse. So a, uh, we'll get a attract a cast of characters coming in. Oh, I didn't buy a scarf. Uh, why did I forget the freaking scarf? Yeah, that's the one thing I didn't buy was a freaking scarf and he's asking for it. Uh, sorry, Louie. Well, that's one sale, but at least he didn't break a combo that I didn't have. Dang it. All right, scrap plate, back in the saddle. Let's make it happen. He's got the same purchasing power as the regular guy, so I usually charge him 125-ish. And you want the armor. See, why, why couldn't, Louie, why couldn't you ask for the freaking armor? You're the one that needs this. But hey, good, uh, good, good amount of cash that we can flip. Can ya? Ooh. And he wants, so yeah, that's a piece of food, and it's a higher price of food. I am absolutely happy to buy that. Now, with food, generally my rule of thumb is 50%, but just barely over it. Like that. 51%-ish. All right. We're back. Sorry about that, kid aggro. All right, so we got ourselves our purchase. So we had to spend money there, and this is why I was saying don't completely break yourself. I'm glad he wasn't our first customer, otherwise we wouldn't have had the cash to uh, buy that. But now we have that candy apple, which we can now stock on the shelves in our next sales period. Or if somebody is asking for food, you can choose the candy apple. Though at this point, I wouldn't do that, and I'll explain why if we encounter that. What do you want? I, of course the little girl wants some candy. 113 for you, young lady. And another little lady. Raincoat. Fair enough. Oop, no, not 133%. Mm, near pin bonus. Just combo. Look at that just combo. We're almost level four off of uh, off of uh, one sales period here. Okay. So I think I'm going to put that candy apple as our token food item. Uh, we'll keep those other two. Um, what else is another... Standard charm's a good one there. Um, necklace. Absolutely a necklace. And the helmet. There we go. That should do well here. So let's uh, do another uh, round of sales. Oh, only two people? That's horrible. And you're buying the wrong item again, Louie. And here I was hoping uh, to get level four, but not off of two people. Well, at least he's looking for the candy apple, so we bought it at like 800-something, and we're gonna unload this thing for uh, 2,000. That's a $1,200 profit right there. So see, buying items from people is a good thing, even though you are in the short term losing money. So good combo, good amount of money, and unfortunately not a good number of customers. So yeah, our profits are down, but that doesn't necessarily mean we did poorly today. Um, it just means we we spent more money than we took in, but we have more in inventory now. Um, so we we're we're still good. It's it, the game recognizes non-liquid assets, although you need to make sure you have enough liquidity when uh, debt repayment time comes into play. 
Uh, but luckily that is on the 8th and uh, today's the 5th. Speaking of the debt, so my goal here for this particular playthrough um, if you look, when you save the game here, and I'll, I'll actually, let me save the game here to demonstrate. See how it says loop one? Well, loop one uh, basically means that, well, every time the debt comes due, the game checks to see if you have enough cash in the bank. And if you do, you pay that, that week's debt and you get to continue playing. If you don't, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of game over. Essentially, you, you know, Tyr says, well, we have to take the house, sorry. Uh, but then Reset wakes up and it's like, oh, that was all just a bad dream. And you get to start over from the beginning. But you get to keep your merchant level, so it gets a little easier. Now, every time that happens, it goes through another loop, essentially. So eventually, if you grind at it, you'll be able to beat the game. That being said, my goal is to beat the game on the first loop. That means... It, that means that essentially missing a debt payment is not acceptable for me. I will not uh, uh, tolerate a, a reset. So basically, if I ever miss one of these, series is over my, because I have failed in my goal. That being said, I will be trying very hard in my goal. So we've got a couple of days to get that 10,000. Not liking where we are right now, but I also, as I said before, we're in a very non-liquid state. Um, so we need to get some stuff in here, um, to, uh, get selling. And we still have plenty of stuff in inventory. Uh, let's get, uh, leather armor. Since we sold the, uh, since we sold the iron armor before. Alright, and, uh, I do want to get to level 4 before I go out and buying more stuff. And we've got enough stuff to sell, so... Let's open it for the morning and hope for more people. Alright, good crowd this morning, I'm happy. Do you have a treasure? Aha! He's asking for something. And yes, we do have a treasure. Now, this... Hmm... This might be a little hairy. This might be a little hairy. Remember I was saying how the relationship levels of your customers matter? Here's where they matter. When a customer comes in to buy an item directly, if they come in and say, I want that back scratcher, um, they will always have enough money to pay for it. And the only thing that would cause cost you the sale is if you uh, demand too much, uh, too high of a markup. When it comes to I'm looking for something, you can offer anything, but they, when, when they come in not sure what they want, they have a limited budget. A limited budget that you can't see. And also a limited budget that goes up with their relationship levels. Now, that being said, trying to basically lob them a, over, a way high price item when they have a limited budget, they might refuse you even if you're offering them a very fair price for it just because they don't have the cash. Uh, now here, he's asking for a treasure. We only have the back scratcher, which is a 1600 base price. That might be running afoul of his budget. Um, I hope not. I'm going to try to make the sale, but we'll see. So I'm going to start with the, our standard markup here. Actually, I'll start with 1800 and see if that fits his budget. All right, it fits his budget. Good. Um, if it were, say, a little girl, they have the smallest budgets in the game. They own, they're at level one, their budgets are like 600. So don't try and lob them anything too high. Now, every time someone levels up, their budget goes up and up and up, and you can start offering them bigger and bigger items when they come in, not sure what they want. But in these, ooh, we got a near pin on that one too. So we got the, uh, got the sale, got the near pin, got all that stuff, and sold our back scratcher. Sweet. Hello, little lady. And like I said, if they come in asking for a specific item, it, it doesn't check their budget. It, they will always have enough money, and you just have to make sure you offer the right price. Of course, candy would be in their budget anyway, even if they just wanted food. Ooh, another uh, pin. Level up! Alright, Louie. Ah, see, he's asking for some food. Now, she bought that one candy off the shelf, so there's no more food on the shelves. But if someone's asking for something, you can always go in the back room and give them an offer something that's not on the shelves. So we have this extra candy, so let's offer it. And like I said, people ask for candy or ask for food a lot, so um, it's always good to stock up on it. I'm going to be restocking on it uh, next time we go shopping. Wow, three near pins. Nice. Good experience gain today. Alright, what do you want? Leather glove. Okay, we can do that. 
And just combo keeps building. The more people you get and the, the more insta sales you get. All right, that's it for the morning, but that's okay. We have 7,775 in our in our bank. We've got merchant level four. Um, so we uh, we can go in there. Now let's check with the uh, tier here. Um, just to double check what we actually got at merchant level four. More items, that's what we wanted. Yeah, more items. This is the golden level right here. This is where we can get that hat gambit going on. Um, so, what's the hat gambit? Well, let me show you something as soon as Tyr comes over here. So, one of the things that we've kind of been neglecting at the moment is the store atmosphere. And the game, the game mentions this in a couple of merchant levels, but we can start playing this game now. So right now, our store is pretty plain. Uh, and, it's, and it's that by default. Um, our default, you know, wooden board floor and our, on our, you know, plain old white walls and our boring countertops, everything and all the decor that you start the game with, uh, start you off at, as an extremely plain store. And that's, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but ultimately what you want is you want to shoot for the middle. You want to be able to appeal to all types of people. Uh, so by bringing ourselves, making our store a little bit more gaudy, um, we will get more customers coming in because our atmosphere suits uh, a, a wider range of people's needs and, and tastes. Now, that being said, um, it's not for another couple of levels that we get the ability to change up our floor and change up our walls and do the things that have a really strong effect on our store's atmosphere. However, there's a way around it. Um, the items that we stock also exude a, a little effect of, um, of light, dark, uh, plain or gaudy. So what we want to do is we want to get our hands on some gaudy items and display them. That will bring the store's um, uh, atmosphere level towards neutral um, uh, without uh, before we even have the ability to change up our walls and floors. The, the best item for that is this, the cloth hat. Uh, so by having one on display, we've already kind of pushed our way towards the gaudy level a little bit. We want to get a couple more cloth hats. Um, and that, actually that's not in the... Well, hang on, I need to get, I need to go here. Yeah, this thing. Let's get a muffler. We need that. Oh yeah, we also need shoes. We never bought shoes. Oh, so we're out of, uh, we're out of treasures. I'm going to buy an unthankful statue though. Because I don't... Oh, and we're running low on food. All right, all right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Pin start. Focus. Hat gambit. Hat gambit. Hat gambit. See, now now that we've leveled up, hat, cloth hats are no longer a limited quantity item. Which means we can buy several of them. Like, oh, let's say three more. Put them all on display. All right, now we have some goodies. Ooh, a steel sword. Hmm, that might want to pick that up. Uh, see if I can get Louie to pick that one up. Although, uh, we still have that worn sword, so if someone comes asking for a sword... Yeah. Alright, hang on. We, we still have a ch charm. We have the sword. Um, we still have a dagger. Still have the staff. Uh, someone bought the bow. Uh, let's, see, let's pick up another bow. Um, laundry pole's still on there. We need the gloves. Let's get a sturdy glove. No one bought the windbreaker. Um, raincoat needed. We still have the armor. Scrap plate, though. Wooden chest piece. Still have the armband. Still have the shield. We've got plenty of hats. Uh, still have the wooden helm. All right, we're good on him. Let's go back to the market and buy more food. Because uh, we go, you go through a lot of food, and we want some good food. Uh, baked yams are good. Um, a beef bowl. I can't afford a beef bowl. We can't afford a watermelon though. Yeah, we have enough. Because how many? We have two more candies plus the watermelon. Um, and there's apples. We could buy apples, but nah, I want I want the higher markup stuff. Uh, so yeah, let's get the watermelon. Although that doesn't leave us with much for. Well, hopefully we don't get people uh, uh, asking to. Uh, 
Uh, what's the next thing we want to put up here? Um, we'll come up a cloth hat up here. Yeah, we want to have several cloth hats on display. It might seem counterintuitive, but trust me on this. Uh, it's it's a good thing. It's a wooden shield here. Now let's at, let's talk to Tyr. And we're still well. I think that wooden shield might have hurt the. Uh, let's replace that because some uh, some items exude plainness. Hmm, what else is exuding plainness? Maybe the leather armor. Wanna we want to try and keep the uh, yeah, summer sandals look good. All right, we're getting closer. Laundry pole, possibly. Oh, the, the muffler is also a gaudy item. That's more like it. So we're not quite at uh, at neutral, but we're much closer. And that will make our store a lot more appealing to, uh, to many other people. Because the more extreme, the more you drift to one of the extremes, the, the less people you get. Uh, so let's go uh, open up a store here. All right, wooden helmet. Fair enough. All right, who's next? Ah, oh, lady. Iron armband. Okay. Uh, they are also pretty picky. Um, they're they they're a little bit looser than the, the little girls, but not by much more. I usually, yeah. They can sometimes sting you with a oh that's too high. They're very strict about their household budgets. All right, common shield. There we go. Thank you. And look how many people are in the store. We had a ton of people in the store. Now, we won't have to keep up the hat gambit for too long, because once we get high enough merchant level to actually start swapping out the floor and the walls, we can we can bring the, the atmosphere where we want to with the decorative items uh, by themselves, and thus leaving our shelves to stock whatever is more economically feasible rather than based on their appearance. Oh, man, she's selling us some food. Good! Just over 50%. Uh, Thank you. I need I need the extra food. I am low on food, so I'm happy to buy that apple off of you, young lady. Ooh, and she's um, he's in. He, ooh, well we have we have a little. <laughs> we can only offer we can only offer what I'd actually offer him normally. So yeah, let's uh, let's buy that, and that happens to be exactly. <laughs> All right. Hopefully nobody else sell, tries to sell. Ooh, all right, he's buying a cloth hat, and he can actually use that, too. That works. Ooh, we nailed it. 30 uh, plus 30 just bonus. Level up. Big, big XP bonus there. Ooh, are we going to keep our combo going? We are. Yes. Summer sandals for the win. Thousand bucks. 128 just combo. That's as high as it goes. So any fur any further purchases will just give us another 128. That's still freaking huge. Look, we're already halfway through level five. This is why the just combo is so important. And also why getting more people in your store is important. All right, that was awesome. That was 10 times awesome. So let's put our some of our goodies here. We got that, uh, that treasure, the uh, thankful statue. So let's put that in the window because that's got a good markup on it. Um, another cloth hat. Keep that gaudiness going. Souvenir charm. Raincoat. Windbreaker. How's our how's our atmosphere tier? Not bad, not bad. Still not perfect, but like I said, it's it's a good. It, it has a noticeable impact on it. So let's open back up again. Yep, good amount of people. Not as many, but nighttime you get fewer people anyway. Wooden chest piece, certainly, my good sir. And uh, we'll have, uh, hopefully we get some good big purchases here. All right. 
And I mean, stocking all those all those cloth hats, they have a good um, uh, price point and therefore a good markup on them anyway. So even if uh, even if people start buying them, um, that's not a bad thing. And she's going for the watermelon. Yes. Oh no, that's not that's too much. Uh, 118. She might balk. Let's go to 115. All right, yep, see, getting our cash back up there. Do you have a treasure? Ooh. Now, here's, here's, all right, all right, lesson, lesson. So we could offer her the thankful statue, but we haven't leveled her up yet. I can tell you right now, she, no, even if we give her a, a really good price, she's going to say, I don't have the cash on me. So, and then she's going to walk out and we're going to lose the sale. We're going to lose our combo. Nobody's going to be happy. So we're going to offer her the unthankful statue because at a base price of 140, she can afford that. Now, she still will balk if you go for too high of a percentage. So keep that in mind. And we get to, you know, we don't get as much money, but we get more of the experience. And at this point, experience is just as important as money. All right, not too shabby. All right, not too shabby. All right, and I think that does that for this episode. So in our next episode, uh, we will continue our uh, gambits to try and keep our cash levels up, uh, get our merchant level up, and make sure that we have enough money for that very crucial first debt repayment. So if you like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment. Good, bad, or indifferent, your feedback is always welcome. So until next time, this has been Pinstar signing out.